All right, today we're going to demonstrate bringing information into Access from an outside source. We've got a empty Access database with no information at this particular point, no tables, and our intention is to import some data from an existing Excel spreadsheet. So Access is already open, it's up and running. I've already switched to the external data tab. Normally when you open it up, you'd be on the home tab, but we'll switch to external data. And in the external data, on the external data tab, we're going to look for the import and link group on the left hand side and you'll see an Excel button. Import Excel spreadsheet is one of our options. After selecting that, it'll automatically open a uh, get external data Excel spreadsheet dialog box. The first thing, first thing it would like to do is um, find out where the file is. So we will browse to the file's location, which in my particular case actually happens to be here on the desktop. So with the desktop selected, I can open up a file named products that we will be working with. And you have two different choices. You can either import the information or you can link to it create your sheet. In our case we're going to leave the selected option import the source data into a new table in the current database and we'll go ahead and click on OK in order to do that. Uh, once this dialog box switches over to the import spreadsheet wizard you'll be given two different choices to see the available worksheets or any named ranges that may be available. In our case there is only one, work only one workbook, only one worksheet. If there were multiple worksheets, they would show up uh, listed and named here. So we'll just work with the one worksheet that we have. You'll also see sample data or the actual imported data will show up in the preview down below. Uh, so with product selected, we'll go ahead and click Next. You do have a choice here to say that the first row contains column headings, which in our example, it in fact does contain column headings. So we'll leave that selected. We'll click Next to go to the next step of the wizard. This is the step that would allow you, since you're coming in from Excel as an external source, to change field names if you choose to do so. Also to change the data type as you're bringing the information in. Uh, also it will give you the option for indexed fields like a primary key field to establish whether you don't want them indexed, do want them indexed with duplicates, or want them indexed with no duplicates, which is what we're going to do here with the supplier uh, ID field because that will end up being our primary key and we do not want any duplication. Also the data type uh, we're going to go ahead and change to a long integer uh, as well. You can do that with any of the available fields. So you can also see that most of these fields will end up being text-based, although some of them are numeric. Uh, the only other thing that you may want to take into consideration is uh, that some of these fields could be skipped in the process of bringing this in. But you can change the name of the field, the data type, whether it is or isn't indexed, or whether you choose to skip that particular field. You'll also notice that one of these that we're bringing in just contains the word false and it automatically indicates that the data type will be yes, no as we bring it in. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. We just made that one change to the first field. Do I want to create, uh, do I want access to create a primary key which will renumber things? Do I want to choose a primary key or not use a primary key? In my case, I'm going to say, you know what, the first field that we're bringing in, the supplier ID in this product table, is perfectly suited to being our primary key. We also indicated in the previous step that we uh, wanted it indexed and that we also didn't want to allow duplicates which also makes it a primary candidate to be our primary key. I'll click Next and at this point I can choose what I would like to name my table. I'm going to uh, leave the name products but I will put a TBL prefix in front of that to indicate an access that this is going to be a table and that's actually the last step of this particular wizard so if I click finish uh, I do have the choice of saving these steps so if my intention is to bring in multiple tables that are formatted in the exact same fashion it would be a wise choice to click save import steps so you don't have to go back through all of these again 
All right, I'm not going to do that in this particular case, but I will click close because that will complete the wizard. Automatically bring in the table. And of course, if I double click that table to open it up, it did in fact bring in the 45 records that were available to us in that table. And if I switch to design view here to see the appropriate data types that were brought in, you'll see that Everything that it initially indicated was brought in as we were looking at that particular step in the wizard and it also made our supplier ID the primary key in this particular example.